God laid this on my heart. In fact, it, it does sort of fit in with the theme of what we have been preaching. If you would turn your Bible to Second Chronicles chapter, oh, well, let's see here, chapter 32, Second Chronicles chapter 32, um, the, the short version of the story, the setup is Hezekiah has restored the house of God, repaired the, um, repaired the door, repaired the uh, porch, repaired the altars, and now they're having services, divine services again inside the house of God. They're sacrificing. And the amount of offerings that people willfully brought in was huge. They, were, they had big, big piles of food. Sheep, cattle that, you know, were eventually going to be sacrificed. People brought them in. And there they were. Now, God always knows what he's doing. Always. Even if he doesn't let us in on everything, we walk by faith and not by sight. So what Hezekiah doesn't realize, what the people of Judah and Benjamin and Manasseh and Ephraim, the others that have joined in with them, what they don't realize is God's piling all that food in there for a reason. Because he knows what's coming. God sees the future. And so, in, so they've got all this, they've got wells inside Jerusalem. They've got all this food, you know, grain was part of the offerings, the wave offerings that were brought in by the people. And there was tons of it inside the city. Hezekiah had put people in charge of it and build, was building complexes so they could house all of this stuff. And then lo and behold, in chapter 32 of Second Chronicles, after these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against, watch this, the fenced cities. The fenced cities. And sought to win them for himself. Let me explain what, they're, what they did. Sennacherib what, didn't just come alone. He brought an army with him. A huge army. And they were going to surround the walled city of Jerusalem and any of the fenced cities that were in the suburbs. They were going to surround them. And knowing that they couldn't just attack them because they had put walls there. Listen to that. They put walls there, so Sennacherib wasn't just able to breach those walls. So his plan was, here's what I'm going to do, he said. I'm going to surround them, and I'm going to starve them out. When they realize that they can't come outside the city and get food, and get water, then they'll be weakened, we will be able to go in, slaughter anybody, or take them into slavery. That was his plan. And what had God done? God had already oversupplied Jerusalem with plenty of food, plenty of water. Now watch this. Verse 2. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So he said, you know, we got all these wells and they're, the water's running outside of the city. Why don't we put a stop to that? Why are we giving Sennacherib all of our water? So they stopped the flow of the water going outside of the city, which means they, they were able to keep the water for themselves. If Sennacherib's plan was to starve Israel out by thirst and by hunger, he didn't know that God had already prepared for it. Now think about that. Has God done anything like this before? Where there was going to be a time where there was going to be a great famine, but before that famine there was a great harvest. Yes. Uh, Pharaoh, Joseph, Egypt. 
the seven years of plenty and and Joseph was in charge of all of that as the second in command to the whole kingdom and so when the seven years of famine came they had plenty of food for everybody and that's how God saved his people Israel you see how it works so one of the things that I always try to tell you is that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're enduring, some of you are sick and it's bothering you. It's bothering me that you're sick. Okay. But whatever you're going through, some people are just sick with sin. Whatever God has taken you through, He's training you and preparing you for the evil day that's coming that we read about in Ephesians chapter 6. So think about that. Who's going to starve who out? Well, Hezekiah is going to starve Sennacherib out. It's not going to work. Sennacherib's plan is not going to work. And the purpose, the reason why Sennacherib was not able to overtake Jerusalem was because they had a wall. To protect them. Now I want you, this God laid this on my heart. I was thinking about preaching it last Sunday. It just never came about. It's been on, I've been thinking about it all week. It just, I don't know why God is having me say this, but let's just learn about walls. Okay. So put that, um, uh, thing back up on the screen, Michael, with the great, that's the great wall of China, by the way. What was that built for? Was that built so that nobody was allowed to leave China back in the old kingdom days? No. That wall was built to protect people and protect the Chinese empire and whoever was emperor from some sort of invading force that could come in and invade China. Walls are necessary. We are living in a time right now. The purpose of Antifa is to break down walls and barriers that are meant to protect the people of the United States of America from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Police officers, you know what they represent? Whenever there is a, uh, whenever there's a riot, what do the police do? They get riot gear out and they get big shields and they stand there in line and they make themselves a wall. And isn't it interesting that the very people who are screaming the loudest about tearing down the wall that Trump is building in Mexico, when they started the Chaz group, what's the first thing they did? Built a wall around it so nobody could enter in it that they didn't want in. Hypocrites. They mean to tear down the protective institutions that are in this country so that they can destroy an election. And now we have the issue of the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg finally died. She'd been very sick for a long time and hanging on. Her hope was that she would live long enough so that a Democrat president would be put in the office so that her place would be her chair would be filled by a liberal on the court. And it didn't happen. And now I'm praying every day that President Trump puts in a ultra conservative on the Supreme Court. I don't care if it's a woman or a man. He's, he's probably going to put in a woman. But that institution of the Supreme Court is a wall of protection that protects the American people, not just from the enemies beyond our country, but even from its own government. Because government can go bad because men are evil. And the Constitution is a wall of protection around the United States of America and the people of the United States of America. When people enter in this country illegally, they have broken the law and they are not protected by the wall, that the same wall that you and I are protected with. You and I cannot be run out of our country for no reason. We cannot have our citizenship 
stripped away from us. We are natural born citizens or those that have migrated in legally. You are now a naturalized citizen, a legal citizen of the United States of America. And you are protected by that, by that wall of the Constitution of the United States of America. We are protected by a wall called the King James Bible. I can just hear people say amen. I can hear them. Okay. I'm telling you, this Bible is a wall of protection around us. When we abide under its authority, we abide under its wall of protection. Now, turn to uh, Psalm 51. Next slide, Mick. I probably should put it up on the screen so you can keep up with me. Psalm chapter 51. The Bible says, verse 18, do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Zion and Jerusalem in the Bible are a type of the church. Anytime you see Zion, anytime you see uh, Jerusalem, it's a, it's a picture of God's glorious kingdom. His, it's a picture of his church. Okay. And God's good pleasure is in Zion. When you abide inside the walls that God has placed around Zion, then you abide in the good pleasure that God has put into Zion. When you step out of the wall of protection of Zion, Jerusalem, you're in danger. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, unto me let us go into the house of of the Lord. Houses have walls. And if people, when people are here in this room, we are protected by the, th this church is built of brick and block and concrete. Built pretty sturdy. We're protected by those walls and we're protected by usually someone watching the security cameras, someone watching the doors to make sure nobody comes in and brings harm into this place. We keep... Keep them locked. And as long as they abide in here, they're protected. So I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, under the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Now look at this. Verse 6. Psalm 122. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. There's peace inside Jerusalem because God has built a wall of protection around it and we're not being harmed by our enemies. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. There's prospering inside Jerusalem. Peace be within thy walls. There's peace inside. Prosperity within thy palaces. Palaces are meant to protect kings. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. God builds walls. A lot of churches have stripped away their denominational identity on purpose. They don't want people to find out that they are a certain denominator they're a methodist or they're a baptist or they're a nazarene or they're whatever they've stripped away their identity and they've stripped away their doctrinal distinction so you have no idea what they believe and they keep reinforcing this idea doctrine is not important love is i will say love is important but i would also say doctrine is equally as important what you believe and how you believe and what bible you believe will either put you outside of God's protection or put you inside God's protection. I'm telling you, each and every one of you and your families, your little ones, your children, you are responsible to build walls and barriers to protect your sheep, protect your flock, Protect your little lambs. Protect your home, your family, your children, your grandchildren. You're responsible for that.
They're looking up to you for protection. Are you giving it to them or are you neglecting your responsibility to your children? My mom, I love her dearly. She is, and my wife and other people, but those two mainly are the reason why I am what I am and who I am. And God put it in my mother's heart when God dealt with her down at this altar years ago. She said, I'm going to have my kids in Sunday school. We grew up in Sunday school. We grew up in church. We grew up going to revival meetings. That's all we knew was that. That was our whole life. And even though my mom at times struggled with different things, she made sure that her family was protected. I remember one night, we were home alone. Dad was out, out of state working. And of all things, we were watching the movie Helter Skelter. It was about Charles Manson. And all of a sudden, somebody came up on our back door, our back porch. And mom took me and Melissa and hid us under the bed. And she grabbed a shotgun. She was ready to blast somebody. We, I won't tell you who it was, but we, got, we knew who it was. Somebody in the neighborhood didn't quite think right. He almost got killed. But my mom was going to protect me and my sister at all costs. That's her responsibility. Amen. Um, let's go to um, Isaiah 26. Walls. In fact, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I haven't prayed yet. And then we'll go to Isaiah 26. Father, I need your help to preach this message, to teach it however you want me to do it. Father, help me to say what needs to be said. Help me, dear God, to make it clear. Clear my mind. Father, help me in the weakness of my body and the infirmity of my body today. Pray, dear God, that you would help us. Bless those who are listening today. Bless your word. Let it be a shelter for all of us to hide us when the evil day comes. Help us, dear God, to understand the necessity of walls, barriers, blockades, protections. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Isaiah 26, 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Now, the flaming idiot liberals in this country have worked against President Trump building a wall between the border of the United States and Mexico. I 100% uh, want that wall. We need that wall. Since he started building that wall, he has come under such, uh, they've tried to impeach him. They've spied on him in his campaign. I believe they've tried to kill him a few times. Why? Because I think we got some crooked politicians that are benefiting financially by things being smuggled in this country, including trafficking of children I believe that's going on I can't prove it but I will tell you that since Trump has been building that wall he's cut down the amount of human trafficking that could take place between Mexico and the United States importing drugs importing women importing children a lot of that stuff has come to a grinding halt and have you noticed that since they arrested Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend and his, his go-to girl, she is the one who got Epstein four to five girls a day, every day. Young teenage girls to molest. Every single day, she got them. So in, isn't it interesting that since they've arrested her, the police now have been cracking down on all these child trafficking syndicates. You know what could be happening? I'm not positive on this, but what could be happening is she's naming names of those who traffic humans because she was getting them for Jeffrey Epstein. It's possible she's singing like a bird. That's meant to protect 
the people of the United States and to protect innocent people from being smuggled into or out of this country. And I'm telling you, some wicked people, some wicked people, they're the ones, whenever you hear somebody squalling and, and getting mad about Trump building that wall down there, you've got somebody, I guarantee you, that is losing money or is involved in it somehow, some way, and does not want that wall built. They've tried everything in the world to stop it. But God said walls are salvation. I want you to think about that. When God saves you, he builds a wall around you to protect you. So that no harm comes to you. Isaiah 60 verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation. And thy gates praise. There's two witnesses right there. Both of them in the book of Isaiah. And both of them are telling you that where boundaries are. There's salvation. I have been made aware of situations with families. Multiple families whose children, whether some of them are adult children or some of them are teenage children, are in total rebellion to their Christian parents and their Christian family. Absolute rebellion. They don't like the walls of separation that their mo godly mother or their godly father or both of them, some, some, we have single parent families, that mean to protect their children against all kinds of harm. Because you know what? The wolves are out there. Wolves are out there. Seeking to harm the innocent. And it's happening. I've said this now for the past several months. And I will continue to say it. Do not be surprised. When you find out that some of your own children have not been serving God. They've been living a lie. They have stepped outside of the boundaries and the protections of God's word. And devils have them under their control. Do not be surprised when that happens because it's happening a lot. A lot. And what happens is these children, sons, daughters, adults, even adult children, walk away from the foundation and the walls that was built for them to protect them in their life from evil. They walk outside of that. And the devil's waiting for them to consume them. And they don't see it. They don't believe it. They've chosen not to accept the boundaries of the Word of God. Notice this. Psalm 84, 11. Notice what I have up on the screen. I have a picture of the sun. And all the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, poor Pluto, he lost his place. What, do, what good does the sun do for all of those planets, including our own? See how massive the sun is compared against the little earth there? There's a lot of gravity there. And you know what the sun does? The sun pulls in... Huge chunks of floating space debris into itself so that it doesn't harm the planets that are circling around it. Notice this, Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Think about it. God is the sun and the sun acts because of its gravitational force, acts as a... Barrier and a protection. It either places these meteors in what's called the asteroid belt and they stay in one place orbiting the sun or they are drawn into the sun away from harming planet Earth. And isn't it interesting that in our recorded history, we've never had a meteor catastrophe that destroyed most of the Earth in recorded history. Never happened. God and his authority is a wall and a shield of separation that when you are under his authority, you are under God's safety. You're under his protection. He broods over you. Let me show you this verse. Psalm 91. 
Look at that picture there. That is a mother hen brooding over her chicks. And Psalm 91 verse 1 says, he that, I love this, I love Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow is a wall, it's protection. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall cover thee, or surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth is His word. He said, thy word is truth. Do you understand that? God is keeping you under his protection because he's keeping you under the authority of the word. When you abide in this book and abide under its authority, God then protects you. He said in Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which were sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thee, thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. It is instinctive. It is in their nature. Those young chicks know to go running to the mama hen. And instinctively she covers them with her wings and feathers. She is putting her own life in danger to protect her young ones. And if chickens can do that, why wouldn't God do that for any one of us? But sin is sin. It's very real. It's very tempting. And it has a lot of power over a lot of people. And there are young people who see what's going on in this world. And they just can't wait to go out and sample the goods that this world provides. And they will find out. They will find out that God meant to protect them and shield them from danger. But because they walked away from God's authority, God says, you're on your own. I will not protect you. You're in danger. I've never done this. I've never, I've never said this publicly. I have dreams every now and then that I think are interesting. I would, I would not dare say that they are prophetic in any way or that they are the word of the Lord. I would not say that. I believe the word of the Lord is right here in this Bible. But there's a dream I had one night that just made all the sense in the world. And the dream, the setting was, uh, we were, our church and the people in our church were at like a state park or something like that. And there was a war going on in our country. And we were hiding out in this park. And um, there was a captain there, an army officer. A captain. And I went to him and I said, sir, what do you want me to do? I'll do anything you ask me to do. And he said, see this, see this entrance here? This is the only way in and this is the only way out. I want you to guard this entrance so that nobody comes in and that nobody leaves. Because I'm going to protect these people. But I want you to guard this entryway. So I did. Man, I, I've never been a soldier. Never been a soldier in my life. But I did. I was, you know, had my rifle up and I was marching back and forth. And I saw a car coming, somebody leaving the camp that we were in. And I knew that they were leaving because they were afraid. And I knew that if they left the camp, that they would be destroyed. So what I did was I fired a warning shot at this guy's car. And he didn't, he didn't stop. He just went past me and went on down the road. And I see a lot of things that I've had to do over the years, that very dream that I had, God put me in a position to warn people, don't go down this road. There's danger there. 
There's protection here. The captain will protect us. Do not go down this road. And a lot of the things that I say online, the Watchman video broadcast, Pastor Mike online, are my way of warning people, don't go down this road. Some of those roads, I've been down there. And I know the harm, the danger of getting outside of the authority of God's word. Because I've done it. But God allowed me to come back. And now knowing what I know about what's down that road, I want to try to guard that road as best as I can and warn people, don't go that way. You'll be destroyed. Never told that dream publicly. But I think it's, I think it's real. I think it's biblical. Take a look at this. Next slide, Michael. What is that? That's Noah's Ark. You know what it is? It's a box. It has four walls around it. And a roof. It's basically just a big, giant box with walls and a door. And the walls were there to protect what was inside that ark. That's Bible Christianity. That's the simplest way to put it. Get inside the ark and you will be safe. There's safety in the walls that God builds there on the ark. There's safety in that. But if you don't get inside that ark, you will perish. And everybody did. Except eight people. Eight people. Are you going to be inside the ark? Are you going to let God protect you? Uh, here's another picture. The wilderness tabernacle. God told him to put a curtain, a barrier, a wall around the sanctuary. And around the courtyard. Why did God do that? Because God said, where I dwell, where I'm going to stay, it must be a clean place. I will not dwell in the midst of defilement, in the midst of filth, in the midst of things that are unclean. I will not dwell there. So God put a barrier around the sanctuary so that nothing that was unclean could enter in the house of God. The house of God, listen, must be clean. The house of God must be clean. Now you think about that for a long time. What uncleanness do you have in your life? Do you not need to be washed? Amen. By the way, every cell in your body has a wall, membrane. What does it do? It protects what's inside the cell from anything that shouldn't be in there. So what do viruses do? They try to get inside the walls of the cell, then get inside the nucleus of the cell and alter the DNA of that person. That's what a virus is doing. Trying to spread itself inside of you so it can live, but it's killing you. And God built a wall around his sanctuary in every cell in your body. Let me, in fact, let me, let me show you this. Here's Trump's wall. That's Trump's wall. Now, is it possible that somebody might be able to climb it? Maybe. But if they're going to do it, we're not going to allow it to be as easy as just coming on in. Which during the last eight years of Obama and others, that's exactly what they were allowed to do. And that's why we have some of the problems we have in this country right now. And no, I'm not against Mexicans coming into this country legally. I'm not against them. I love those people. Love their food. Okay? I love those people. And I want them here legally so that they will be protected by the laws that are meant to protect them. Look at this one. A man's home is his castle. Moms and dads, you need to be careful. 
If there was a man walking around your house, looking in your windows, in the middle of the night, what's he up to? No good. The castle law, in the state of Missouri, they have a castle law. A man's home is his castle. And it says, basically, if somebody comes in your house, breaches the walls of your house, and comes in your house in the middle of the night, you have a right to shoot him and kill him. That's why the McCloskeys were right in pulling out guns to defend their house. Because they knew that people had already been killed by those rioters. They were right in what they did, and I support them 100%. But watch out what your kids are watching. Most of these kids now have phones and tablets. And Disney knows that. Disney is one of the most perverted child pedophile organizations in the world. Using nasty, vulgar imagery in their cartoons, in their computer graphics. Now kids are being inundated with superheroes that are transgendered. Teens on Nickelodeon and Disney Channel that come out and admit that they are sodomites. That program, that's, that shouldn't be let kids watch that. Should never happen. But why are they doing it? They're intending to breach inside the home to go past the authority of mom and dad and reach those children and alter their thinking. You have skin on your body. What's it there for? It's the largest organ in your body and is there to protect. It is a wall, a barrier around the vital organs and the vital senses and the vital nerves and the blood and everything else. It's there to protect your body. If they skinned you, if you, if you ever get burnt and lose your skin, you're probably going to die of infection. Now take a look at this. This article, women can now legally go topless in six states after a federal ruling. A federal court ruling over a ban on women going topless in public has essentially made it legal for women to go topless in Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Kansas, and Oklahoma, according to news outlets. CBS affiliate KUTV reports that the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, which is over these six states, struck down a topless ban in Fort Collins, Colorado, after two women sued the city for the right to go topless in public. Since Fort Collins is not appealing the decision, the next step would be the Supreme Court. That means topless bans in these six states are no longer enforceable. The lawsuit was brought by two women who are part of, and I had to block these out because they're filthy, movement on social media, specifically Instagram, which does not allow photos of exposed, and I even blotted that out too. Plaintiffs Britt Hoagland and Samantha Six sued Fort Collins saying that they being able to take off their shirts in public is their right and is a step towards gender equality. Let me tell you what that's really about. Let me tell you what it's really about. It's about allowing young girls to walk topless. You know what clothes are? They're a wall. Ladies, how you dress... How you dress determines how people see you. And these women want the right to go topless, but then they'll want a ban on anybody touching them. Well, I'm telling you, when women start walking around in public topless, men are going to grope them, including Joe Biden. It's a setup to, to bring fornication to young girls. It's a setup. Clothes are a wall. Ladies and men, you ought to dress modestly. Amen? Dress modestly. That means 
you're going to wear yoga pants, put something over your private parts to cover it up so people ain't staring. Because they will. You are to dress modestly. That is a wall and a barrier that God gave Adam and Eve. God clothed them and put a barricade around them to protect them. Ephesians chapter 6. Here's a wall that God gives to us. Put on the whole armor of God, verse 11, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The armor of God is basically a wall that God gives you to protect what you believe. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, stand. Stand, stand, withstand, stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins good about with truth. Cover up your loins. Cover them up. It's wicked to walk around exposing. It's wicked. Having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, covering up your breasts with righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, shoes are a whole lot better than going barefoot, I guarantee you that. Especially when you're walking on hot coals. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's to protect you. God gave you a wall of truth called faith. You believe everything that God said, and that then stands as a shield, a wall, a barrier against the fiery darts that the devil will throw at you. I guarantee you, he challenges your faith. He'll do it through sin. Sin will creep in, and you'll, you'll be back in sin again. But what he's doing, he's challenging your faith. Do you really believe what this Bible says? And have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith where you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and all and supplication for all saints hey defend brethren defend the brethren defend people in your church even if you heard that they did something wrong, defend them. You say, look, we got, you know what we got in our church? We got a bunch of sinners. So if you want to say anything about anybody in our church, I guarantee you they would come here and tell you the truth about themselves because they know it. They know they're rotten sinners. But they know that God has saved them and God has protected them and God has clothed them. And he's put walls around them called a shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance. Supplication for all saints. 1 Peter 1, 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. The loins of your mind. Get your mind straight and be sober. Now watch this. Watch this. Sobriety is a wall that God puts into your mind and your thought processes to allow you to filter out what is true and what is not true. It's where your moral decisions are made. Right here in the, for, in the forefront of your head. That's where all your moral decisions are made. You know the truth of what's right and what's wrong. So you gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Because what happens when you get drunk? What happens when guys walk into a bar and see a bunch of ugly women? Well, they drink. And the more they drink, the prettier the women get. Drunkenness is tearing down the wall that God put in your mind that was meant to keep out bad decisions. Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought in you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. First Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. 
1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Sobriety is a, is a wall of protection around your conscious thoughts that filter out things that are right and things that are wrong. Pretty girl walks by and got nice looking young man walks by. And all of a sudden you look and then you tell yourself that ain't right. That ain't right. I've made it. David said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I then look upon a maid? Work on the sobriety of your mind. Get your mind right. Put that barrier of protection around your thought processes. Cast down imaginations. Nehemiah. In, in Nehemiah and Ezra, the two books deal one, one with building the house of God, the temple of God. The other with building the wall around Jerusalem. Because they were coming back and they were going to rebuild the city. So in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 7, it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither shall they see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times from all places when she returned, uh, unto us, they will be upon you. They were trying to get the Israelites to stop repairing the breaches that were in the wall. Why? Because they wanted to invade. Have we not been invaded in this country already? We've been infiltrated. Not invaded, we've been infiltrated. This country is very corrupt. Politicians, very corrupt. Look at this, Proverbs chapter 24. Here's what will happen to you. Somebody called me this week and asked me a question I think is related to this passage. They were talking about salvation. And they said, you know, I, I know we don't work salvation. We don't do works for salvation. But should our salvation, should our faith... Does our faith have to endure to the end? And I said, absolutely. Absolutely. Not our works. See, Ephesians 2.8 tells us that we are His workmanship, created unto Christ, created in Christ Jesus. I, got, I better read it. I'm getting it wrong. I don't want to tell you something that ain't right. Let's see. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. Now, let me go back here. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Here we go. Ephesians 2. For verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk on them. So when God saves us, he then does good works through us to help our faith and we remain faithful. God gives us the gift of enduring faith. And faith in what? This Bible. So that no matter what happens, no matter what Antichrist arises and how he fools everybody into making people believe he's Jesus, you know the difference and you know he's not Jesus. You will know it. You'll know it. And it was the work of God in you that caused your faith to endure. So look at Proverbs chapter 24. But here's what happens. There's some people, I guarantee you, there's some people that are going through this right now. Guarantee you. Maybe it's good that nobody's here today. Proverbs 24, verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw, considered it well, looked upon it and received instruction. You see it? 
your lack of diligence, your playing now back in the, the yard of sin, and you're neglecting the vineyard of God that has a wall around it. And what, has, what happens over years to walls where they are not maintained and nobody does anything for them? What happens? It's just natural things happen. Those walls just fall down. God allows it. God allows the corruption of this world to destroy the very wall that God was trying to use to keep you in his vineyard, in his fold, in his sheepfold. But take a look at your life now. It's all grown over with thorns, covered the face thereof, the stone wall thereof was broken down. And Solomon said, I, I thought about that. I considered it. I received instruction by that. That's, that's you right now. That's you. And yeah, I have some people in mind. But I'm pretty sure that there's people that I don't even know. That this is where they are right now. It's not too late. God allowed Nehemiah and God allowed Ezra in those two books. They rebuilt the house of God and God allowed them to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem to protect them. And the enemies tried to stop it. And God said, no, I'm going to protect my people. You have to protect your family. Guys, husbands, you have to protect your family. You have to protect your children. The wolves are out there everywhere. Everywhere. The wolves will be after you too. Get under God's wings. Get under his wall. Let God shield you. Let God protect you. Let's bow our heads. And I know that I can't ask you for any kind of response. But I just want you to ponder now what God's been saying to you. The reason why there's a breach in the wall God allowed it to teach you that your vineyard must be maintained by your desire and your will and your faith and your trust in God. And maybe it's not too late. Will you come back to Jesus? Will you do that? Father in heaven, come before you today. Thank you, God, for allowing me to preach this message. I know, Father, it's hard. And I, Father, I'm just, my heart just goes out to some people who have let their vineyard just go. Father, I've been there. I can't judge anybody. I've been there. I've done it before. So I'm not judging anybody. But I know, Father, that there's a way out. There's a way back. I know the wall can be built back. I know the vineyard can be restored. The nettles and the thorns, they can be taken and burnt to save the vineyard. That's what's important. Help us, dear God, to protect our children from evil people in this world. Help us, dear God, to protect our children from other evil children in this world. Help us to protect our children from the media influences that are all around them. Help us, dear God, to protect our homes, the sanctity of our church, so that no false doctrine enters into this place. Help us, dear God, to be diligent. Help us, dear God, to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And you'll help us, Father. You promised you would. So, Father, I pray God you'd bless your word today. You do, Father, what you want to do with this message and whoever's life you want to do it in. I trust you and I love you for that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless his word, which is magnified even above his name. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. All of God's people said, Amen.